morning guys, Small Town Bassin here, and it is Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas everybody. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be Ethernet connecting my new Hummingbird Helix 10 Mega right here to my old Hummingbird Helix 7 on the bow. Both of these are Gen 2 units, so an Ethernet switch is not necessary. All we got to have is the cabling. So I'm going to show you how to do that right here in a second. All right, guys, so the way this works is with the, if, if they're both Gen 2 units, they're both the same series of units. Doesn't matter if one's a Mega and one's not. That doesn't matter. They're both the same generation. So an Ethernet switch is not necessary. Now, if I wanted to connect the 5 to these two, uh, because it's not a Gen 2, it would take an Ethernet switch to transfer the data, to communicate the older Gen 1 to the Gen 2 units, which, I mean, as technology advances, um, it's necessary because... There's different processes going on in these units, in the in the the CPUs of the units. So it's almost like a different language. They speak different languages, and to break that barrier, you have to have the Ethernet switch that converts um, the signal from one unit into something readable to another. If that that's kind of a simple way to put it. But we're not doing that. We don't care about that. The only thing this five does on my boat is it displays what this trolling motor transducer sees and the only screen I look at on that is down imaging period stays on down imaging all the time I want to know my depth and I want to see a clear picture of what's directly under my feet while I'm fishing an area the seven is map and 2d sonar I keep it on that screen all the time so I'm communicating that unit to this unit for the simple reason of when I press mark on this guy right here, I want to be able to go to the front of the boat, operate the trolling motor with my foot, and look down and see that waypoint on my Helix 7. That's what everybody wants, man. Um, what I've been doing is marking a waypoint and looking at the map. I use the same map on both units. I use the, uh, um, the Hummingbird Lake Master Plus card. This unit actually has a Smart Strike card. It is Hummingbird Lake Master, though, so these two cards will display the same map. So that's going to work. And that's all I want to do. I want to be able to push mark and see it up front, and vice versa. If I push mark up front and I see something, you know, I wind up sitting on top of fish while I'm on the front. I can hit mark and come back to it on a later date. It'll be on the big graph right here at the uh, console. But anyway, so this is what I had to buy. In order to make this happen, I have to buy, only on the Helix units do you have to buy a dongle. The Solix and Onyx, you don't need it because they have this type of threaded connector. Helix units have press fit connectors, so you have to buy a dongle, which is an adapter, to plug into your Helix unit to connect to the Ethernet cord to the other Helix unit. So it takes two dongles and one Ethernet cord. Um, and that's how I'm going to connect from bow to console. It's pretty simple. Now these these cables total were about 120 bucks for all three. They're they're very expensive cables, and that's kind of disheartening, uh, Hummingbird. I mean, we could have done better than that, I think. But they're quality cables. Um, it's a shielded cable, so it'll be a good signal from bow to console it's you know i've got 20 foot which is way more than what i need but it'll get the job done that's what i need that's what you have to have to make this happen maybe one day they'll go wireless with it and it'll send bluetooth talk to each other that way but uh maybe we're asking too much anyway uh, well all i need now is a screwdriver to take apart my quick connect plug and install my dongle for this unit. So I'm gonna get at that and then we'll continue as we go. Um, and then we'll mark some waypoints and, and we'll test it out, we'll see what happens. All right guys, so I got them temporarily hooked up. 
for a test. I've got my dongle tied into my quick connect plug, ethernet to the dongle on this unit. So now we're just gonna power up. Um, but now what I did on the seven is I went through and restore factory defaults, deleted all my waypoints. I'm starting fresh. Um, every waypoint I've been, I've marked them myself, been using them so long, I know them. So I don't really need them on here. I, I know where the productive waypoints are when they're productive anyway i you know i don't know but i know where they're at and i know the areas that i need to check out so we're starting fresh on this unit so now every time i mark a waypoint on the mega i'm going to see it here so it's, it's like a clean slate i'm starting over and that's a decision i made you may not want to make that decision um, but i didn't want to clutter new waypoints with old waypoints because now Everything I mark is going to show up on both graphs. I don't want to get confused on what I'm looking at here. Um, I may mark it on that one, and it already exists on this one. That'll kind of clutter things up a bit, and I don't want that problem. Um, let's check my views here. That's the only view I ever want to see on this thing. Everything else is hidden. I see I'm right next to Luther Lake number one. All right, that's in my hometown. I live right by the lake down here. Now let's go to the new unit. We'll power it up. And I hope this works out. We'll see what happens. Anyway, you see my camera. This is why I have trouble with audio. No mic port. Now I've got auxiliary battery. That's a whole nother, this is a whole nother story. But this is, this is my setup. This is what I talked to you on. My Sony. Alright. Exit, exit. Um, there we go. All right. Let it go through its uh, GPS connection. It'll take it a minute because we're not near water. Uh, there we go. We got GPS now. Active side right. Let's back out a little bit here. It tells me what road I'm on here. All right. This is a... It's got a better GPS in it. Let's zoom it out 500 feet. So I'm gonna match. I'm gonna match my distance here. 500 feet. Radar ready. Just beeped at me. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do. Mark waypoint double lock one. Waypoint double lock one. <laughs> Look at there, it even put the dang fish symbol just like, look at that. <laughs> I'm drifting a bit because these units are 18 feet apart. See that, that's 20 feet, that distance. You see that? 20 feet and look where my waypoint is about 18, 15 to 18 feet away. <laughs> That's awesome. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit mark. Boom. Alright. Waypoint created. Let's go back over here. <coughs> did it show up? <laughs> it sure did. And it showed up as another color because it came from that graph. It's black. Or yellow, it's yellow. The one this one created, it's black. <laughs> now that right there, that's awesome. All right, guys. So, so now what you want to do is just verify by going into your unit, menu twice. Now you have a network icon. It knows you're networking from unit to unit. All right. So we're going to go through that menu and go to Network Source Setup. And it'll give you everything going on here. My 2D. All right, so, so what mine did is it picked out the best transducer. And by default, it went to the best transducer. And it's showing my source as the Mega Imaging, which it's powered down right now, so it's not lit up. But if I turn it on, it'll light that up. Um... My mega imaging transducer for 2D, my DI 
SI, um, temp, temp, and GPS. No fix because it's powered off. Um, now, if you want to change that and, and select this right here, you just hit select. Uh, but I want to leave everything on one transducer now so I don't have conflicting signals. So now it's going to be using only the mega transducer. It's not going to be pulsing the compact side imaging transducer that goes to this unit. And that's just verify what you want. You can pick and choose which one you want. I want to use my mega transducer for both units. This one little cable here does all that. So we just verified all that. And I'm just going to power it down. All right, guys, now operating multiple units like this obviously requires a lot of power. It requires a quality power source, clean power, and I rely on my Battleborn batteries to do that for me. I've got all my deep cycle electronics attached to a Battleborn 12 volt lithium battery, and it does the job with overkill. Man, I can power all my graphs, power all my pumps, power all my lights on this one Battleborn. LiPo battery and man it is amazing if you're looking to get one and looking to drop that extra weight in the back of your boat go to battlebornbatteries.com check them out and tell them I sent you and they will hook you up all right man that's it I'm gonna run this cable inside the boat here I mean y'all need to see that it's just a little short I can reach it's probably seven feet eight feet maybe <coughs> but uh <coughs> That's it. It's very simple to connect your same generation units with Ethernet. Um, it was an expensive cable to buy, but I think it's going to be well worth it. It'll pay off in the long run, and uh, hopefully I'll be more productive on the water with this. Well, guys, that's a, that's a quick little tip video. It's not really a how-to, but it's, it's kind of a how-to video. Plug your dang cable in, turn the units on, good to go. So that's that, guys. Merry Christmas, and until next time, you keep on fishing.